Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life with best-selling author and coach Kathy Williams, a show to help you tap into the support of the universe and access the abundance that's available in every area of your life. Listen in for conversations and tools to create more ease, joy, and possibility with family, relationships, business, and living. Kathy's joyful perspective will help you tap into your own wisdom and create a life of presence and abundance your way. Listen live on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, or anytime on iTunes or at IOM FM. Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams. And I'm so delighted you're here with me. You know, I always love hearing from listeners uh, when you give me your topics that you'd like to hear about or when you say something like, hey, you know, I really got a, a lot out of that particular show or this was a new concept to, for me. That's amazing. You know, this I love to be interactive, especially on social media because it is social. So you can find me at um, on Facebook at Kathy Jones Williams, um, Kathy Williams, author, speaker, transformation agent. You can also find replays of the shows and a free money rain exercise and all my upcoming stuff, including classes in Colorado and Hawaii and online at meet kathy williams.com and that kathy has a k and a y so meet kathy williams.com and uh reach out let me know your show ideas what you like more of and uh what sparks your interest or, or what you i've said that like befuddles you <laughs> all of it is welcome uh so today's topic is something that uh, seemed really relevant this week. I have uh, several friends who have lost loved ones, and, and this show is called, um, well, this show is about, I never remember the names, <laughs> but this show is about dealing with the emotional tough times. You know, those things that hit our hearts, like a breakup or a divorce, the real disappointment when you've been working on something for a long time and it doesn't come through, or, you know, the death of a loved one. These are all really challenging situations. And if you're going through one of those right now, first off, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's, it's challenging. And know that you're not alone. You know, each one of us goes through something like this at some point in our life. And, um, yeah, it's, it's never fun, and you do get through it. So um, I'm going to explore with you today some ways to make the load lighter, uh, ways to make it easier, and um, to, to be easier on yourself as well. Because a lot of times when these things happen, uh, whether it's a divorce or, or someone's death or even you know, something that didn't pan out that we were really hoping for, we look at ourselves and say, well, I should have done this, 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 and this differently, right? I shouldn't have done this. So regrets, right? Looking at what we supposedly did wrong or should have done differently. And, and instead, if you can bring a little bit of, of kindness for yourself, it's a huge gift. Uh, I just heard today that when Elizabeth Gilbert's partner was dying, you know, she was doing her best Elizabeth was, or Liz, was doing her best to be the best caretaker she, she could. And later on in the process, uh, our partner said to her, you know what, that's not your job to be the best. What your job is, 
is to have mercy and compassion for yourself. And gosh, you know, if we can remember that, wow, we all deserve a little gentleness in the process of, of you know, because these are challenging, right? We, uh, when someone dies, it's like, oh, you know, you're already going through something hard and then to glom on, on top of that, all these things you should have done or should have done differently, it's, it just adds more pain to the pain, all right? So I sometimes um, do clearing with people and I, um, there are all different ways to do it. Some people like to throw stuff into the fire. Some people like to use the clearing statement from acts of consciousness. I just, I just often, you know, because I asked, okay, universe, what's going to be the fastest thing to help people clear? And what I got was collapse it all back to energy. And um, when I was reading Jack, Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, Supernatural, I really got the science behind why that would work. Um, it's late in the book, like chapter 13 or something like that. Um, so everywhere you're adding pain to your pain by beating yourself up and telling you, yourself you should have done things different or differently, will you collapse all of that back to energy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Breathe a little bit deeper. And, you know, so let's just, I'm, we're going to dive right in here and do an exercise. And this is the exercise from NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, that helps people get through grief. And we're going to do a couple different exercises today. And, you know, everybody's grieving process is, is different. And so, you know, like allow your process to be whatever it is. And if these tools help you, or if you like one more than another, go back to that one, right? Not everyone is going to be a fit. So just, just know that if you don't love this first exercise we do, you may, might love the next one we do together. All right. Um, when we're going through grief, you know, a, a lot of times it's, it's something that you would like to have, like is lost or is not present, or you, you finally come to terms with the pack, fact that you're not going to get it. So in essence, it's kind of reaching for something that's not here, reaching for some desiring something and knowing that it's not available. Right. And sometimes it's not available right now, but will be available in the future. So uh, let's tap into this through the NLP exercise. All right. If you're in a space where you can shut your eyes, go ahead and do that. If you're not, <laughs> please don't. OK, come back to this exercise another time and um, it will be here. You can always find the replays of Sexy Mom Abundant Life at iom.fm or on iTunes. So closing your eyes, if you can, tap into the energies that were present for you when you were with this person or that you expected to get from this thing, like if you, if you I need a job or if you, something like that. All right. So each of these different energies or feelings, you're going to encapsulate in a ball. So let's say, um, you, I'll just talk a little bit and then have you do it. Okay. So let's say laughter was one of those things. And you had a lot of laughter with this person. You're going to encapsulate it in a bubble and then just put it near you. So it might be a blue bubble light blue. Okay, then you get another energy and that energy was the energy of feeling connected or loved and you you choose the, a pink bubble for that and put it near you. Okay, and if you like to, you can have a little bucket or basket for all these bubbles, uh, some container to hold all of them. So go ahead and do that now. What are the qualities 
the feelings that you had, maybe even that you're afraid you won't have again in relation to this person or this thing. Or the joy or that you felt stimulated, like intellectually. You felt stability. What are those qualities? And for each quality, see if you can get a sense of it in your body. It's okay if you don't. See if you can. Uh, name it and give it a color for its bubble. And so what you do is continue to fill that basket with all these different qualities. And as you do that, I want you to get a sense of your own personal timeline. And what that means is, what direction is the future for you? Like, if you think of something that's out one week, or one month, or one year, is it off to your right? Is it off to your left? That is the future. Does it seem to be in front of you? What direction is the future? In some cultures, it's above. <laughs> future is up. Right. Getting a sense of what direction is your future. So if you go out one month and then maybe all the way to December, you get a sense of like what way is the future? And once your basket is full of different colored bubbles with all these qualities, draw your timeline way out into the future for years. And now throw these bubbles into the future so you see driplets and droplets of color flashes of color everywhere in your future so that you know you'll have all of these qualities and continue to have them throughout your life. So that's an exercise I've used with some success with different people in, in terms of you know what they're feeling they're missing out on because sometimes it's really that quality of, of what we experienced with that person the connection the loving the, the joy the exuberance whatever it is that we feel we're gonna miss out on come future And of course, there are other practices and things that we can do um, as we talk about the grieving process and, and or, or just being in contracted, um, contracted emotion. When we're in contracted emotion, it's like somewhere in our body, like physically, we feel contracted. Usually that's the chest, sometimes it's the throat or belly, um, even the head can feel contracted, like, uh, I don't want to be in this. So one of the things I invite people to do when you're in a contracted space, and this could be just you got an email that kind of triggered you, or, or something much, much deeper, that you find a way to expand that out. So we, um, before we go to the break here, we'll practice expanding. And as we're on the break, I invite you to continue kind of expanding to see how much you can expand. Where can you go with it? Can you go farther? Can you expand beyond the solar system? All right. So go ahead and just 
wherever you are, and you can do this eyes open or closed, doesn't matter. Sort of sense the energy in and around your body. And now soften your awareness outward to fill the space you're in. If that's a room, sense all four walls the floor and the ceiling, and sort of the spaciousness of space. Okay, so you're aware of all of that. And now expand beyond that. Fill the entire building. If you're in the car, go beyond the car. Okay. And expanding the spaciousness there. And recognize even the things that seem solid, even the, the sensations you have in your body that seem solid are simply energy vibrating. Even the walls are simply energy vibrating. So expand out to include all of this, to include the entire town. Expanding upward, downward, and outward, upward, downward, and outward, upward, downward, and outward, thicker and thicker. Okay, so you're expansive. Right, and see if you can expand all the way to the ocean and through the ocean. And often we expand not only our awareness but also the sensation. Whatever you've been experiencing, you can expand that out as well. So even as we go into the break, we can continue to kind of play with, well, how much can I expand even though I'm still connected to my body? How much can I even expand in every direction, including the direction that feels like the least possible for me. How much can I expand in that direction? So you could expand across the solar system if you wish. Keep going while we go to break and we'll be back in just a moment. your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today, so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance Course. Kathy also travels, facilitating radical abundance and access consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule to connect with Kathy or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, 
flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams, and I love hearing from you. I know I told you earlier, but I really do. <laughs> um, let me know how these exercises are for you. Uh, I send out reminders about the show, both upcoming and previous shows. Uh, via email. So if you'd like to be notified or if you'd like to get a free uh, money rain exercise and create your life exercise, you can head to meetkathywilliams.com. And right on the homepage, you can sign up for that exercise and also for the newsletter. Um, also, I have a couple of things coming up, which I'd love to share with you. And one is in sunny Colorado, just outside Denver. I'm going to be uh, giving a four day foundation class coming up uh, at the end of July. That's July 22nd through 25th, or no, no, sorry, 25th through 28th. July 25th through 28th, I'll be giving the four day foundation class and it's packed with tools for creating your life in a different way, packed with tools for more ease emotionally, um, more ease financially, all sorts of ways. It's, this will be my 29th foundation class I've facilitated. And after that class, I've seen clients go out and participants go out and uh, one lady said, I'm, ma I'm making three times as much money as I was before the class. And, I've heard people say, I have more hope than I've had in a year and, and just like amazing, amazing things. Um, there was a woman who got engaged right after the class. It was just super fun. Like what people create using the tools is really what juices me, even though we have a lot of laughs and, and amazing peace, deep, deep, deep peace in the class as well so it's it's truly a gift that keeps expanding you know i was saying to myself gosh you know after my first foundation class i knew it was going to change my life so i took a whole year to do it and um within the week i was making more money within the month i had dropped the weight that i had been carrying and uh, the my parenting got much much easier the biggest thing for me was really I let go of that constant self-criticism that I had lived with almost all my life. And that, you know, that is a priceless, priceless gift. And so I have uh, Colorado, July 25th through 28th, and then Hawaii. It'll be my 30th and very last foundation class, uh, August. 20 something. <laughs> um, um, uh, you can find out more at meetkathywilliams.com forward slash upcoming. If you know me, I remember numbers great, but not always dates. And that kind of befuddles the people who work in my business because we always have to confirm two or three times because I may just give them the wrong day. <laughs> All right, but uh, the Colorado class is July 25th for sure. All right, um, so we're talking about expansion, right? Expansion of, of, of our awareness outward and expanding outward so often releases us from the grip of that contraction we can feel when we're sad or angry or, or frustrated or whatever it is, expanding out. Now, an additional way to practice this exercise is actually to make the sensation you're experiencing more expansive, too. So we'll do this, but I don't want you to pick the biggest, deepest, darkest sadness that you're experiencing now or have ever experienced. I would like you to pick something small, 
to practice on. All right, so let's just go into an upset that you've had, maybe the last upset you've had. So mine was, I got this email that just was a twist in my a universe. It's all resolved now, but it was, it was like, really? You're asking this, you want me to refund you this much because you think I charged you wrong? <laughs> um, okay, so it's just like whatever upset is in your world, okay? That's over now, but it was an upset and tap into that and see if you can sense that in your body. And so we're deliberately aiming to sense that. And now what I'd like you to do is expand that upset along with your awareness out to fill the room. See how much you can do that. So you're expanding the upset now, downward, upward, and outward. Bigger. And if this upset has a color, expand that out. And now expanding to fill the building if you're in one. And expanding bigger. Bigger than that, bigger than that, bigger than that, bigger than that. Yes. Wow. Okay. And see if you can expand the upset across the country and across the globe. And now see if you can expand the upset across the solar system. So from this planet to other planets to the sun, just expanding the upset bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger across the galaxy, bigger and bigger, and uh, to include this galaxy as one of thousands upon thousands, millions and trillions of galaxies. Okay, and just tap into that and see if it's still as substantial as it used to be, or if it's kind of dissipated, like it's become more diaphanous. All right, so I've never heard anyone I've done this with say that it's become more substantial. It kind of loses its charge as you go. So the more you practice this with the smaller upsets, then you can start to play with things that have hit you harder and expand those outward. Like loneliness can be one. When you feel lonely, you can expand that and expand that and expand that. And it can really change both how you feel physically and also your perspective on this situation. All right. So these are, there are so many games we can play with, with how we're feeling. Right. And we're going to get to some cognitive stuff too, right? <laughs> we're not just going to do uh, physical exercises. I, I just, I want to do one more um, physical exercise, and this I got from um, Dr. Richard Bandler uh, from his book. Uh, at the break, I can find it. It's called something like The Secrets of Being Happy or something like that. And it's a pretty thick book. <laughs> there are lots of secrets. <laughs> All right. So what I'd like you to do, and, and you don't have to do it now if you don't have one, but uh, you can find it another upset and, and get the sensation in your body. And what you'll do with that is name the color. Like, what color is it? People often say brown or pea green or something like, you know, whatever it is for you. Okay. And then really tap into it and ask it what direction are you flowing? Like, what direction are you spinning? You might say, well, it's not. No. Well, any emotion moves, right? It's all energy. So get in there and what, first, where are you feeling it? What color is it? What direction is it moving? How is it spinning? And once you've tapped into that, go ahead and reverse the spin. So allow it to spin a different direction. Hopefully the reverse, right? But if, if you can't reverse it, just find a different direction for it to spin. Okay. 
And then ask yourself, okay, what would be more effective for discharging this? Would it be more effective to spin it faster or slower? This is not in the book, this part. Okay, and now, can you pop it out of you and allow it to continue to spin? And often, when we spin it faster or slower, the color will change. It's a different frequency. Okay, so those are a few different exercises. So we've done three. We did the NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming um, Grief Exercise. The one with um, all the different colored bubbles and moving those around <laughs> into your future. We've done the exercise of expanding out both expanding the um, just your awareness of your awareness, with, which often changes things, and expanding whatever sensation we practiced with a small upset. And the more you practice, the easier it gets, like anything. And then we just did this one. Of, okay, what color is the sensation? How is it spinning? How is it moving? Where is it moving? How fast is it moving? Can I change that? And see if you can move it out. Okay. You know, oftentimes when we are going through, you know, some challenge, we're expected to behave or we're, we're expected to respond in a certain way, right? It's kind of the society's expectation that you'll be sad when someone dies or, or when you get divorced or um, when there's a big breakup. Kind of society's expectation that, that, oh, you don't get something that you really thought you wanted, that, that you'll be disappointed or upset. So sometimes, you know, what we're doing is we're conforming to how we're, quote, supposed to be and or aware of how other people are responding to the situation. And we're taking that on as though it's true for us. So that's not to say you're not sad when someone dies. However, your sadness may be magnified or multiplied because of your awareness of how everyone else is feeling around you. So a question I often ask clients is, how much of that, whatever you're experiencing, is not even yours? So oftentimes they say, oh, wow, like 80% is not mine. Okay, cool. That's your awareness. You're a, a very aware person. That's your awareness. Okay, can you just unhook from it? or send that energy wherever it creates the greatest possibility. That way you can metabolize what's yours. And I studied Ayurveda for a long time and Ayurveda, there's this idea that it's not so much what you eat that's a big deal, it's what you digest or don't digest. So whatever you can't actually digest becomes a toxin toxin or becomes toxic for your system. So you may eat like the greatest meal in the world of like nice cooked greens with ginger and, and uh, whatever else, great protein, great quality foods. And you eat that, but if you eat way too much, your, your body doesn't actually digest all of it. So it becomes toxic in the system. All right, well, the same thing is true with emotion. Right. A lot of times, you know, either to be strong or, you know, when we're so aware of other people's emotions, we're trying to digest all of it. Right. Or we're and we're not digesting or when we're trying to be strong, we might not actually be metabolizing our own emotion because we're trying to hold it together. Right. 
And so if, if we allow whatever emotion, whatever's present to become a gift and actually welcome it in, it allows us to digest it a lot easier than if we're pushing it away, right? So like viewing each emotion as a welcome guest, kind of like, okay, thank you for being. What is it gonna take for me to just be present and allow this to like move through my system? Because emotion are energy in motion, they're moving. Right. If we resist them, then they become, again, that that challenging thing. What we resist persists. So when the emotion arises, whether that's at the ice cream parlor or at the concert or over dinner with friends, what if you could just allow yourself to be with it instead of thinking you shouldn't be that way? All right. So that might require going into the bathroom and just breathing with that emotion or doing one of the activities we did to kind of move that energy or, um, you know, finding something to be grateful for. Oh yeah, I'm really grateful for having this person in my life. You know, oh, I'm really grateful that, you know, I'm just present with my emotion right now, okay? And the emotion likely came because you were thinking of that person, right? Or lack of them or thinking of the situation or lack of it, right? That emotion follows whatever thought you're, you're on. Um, you know, likely you're not going to be experiencing that emotion all day long because your mind has a zillion places it goes. So from looking at the beautiful flowers to uh, your cute little puppy to you know, different things. However, the emotion can pop in when we just think, oh, I no longer have this lover in my life. The flower reminded me of them. Or, oh, geez, I no longer have this person I loved so much um, present for me. So not pushing the emotion away, but you know, being willing to receive it and being, well, we'll talk about other people more when we come back from the break. Um, thanks so much for listening to Imperfect Brilliance, everybody. We'll be back in just a few minutes. The future of Internet Radio is here. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance Course. Kathy also travels, facilitating radical abundance and access consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule to connect with Kathy or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. 
So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams, and today's conversation is about emotions and those emotionally challenging times. You know, a breakup, a death of someone you really love, a, a huge disappointment, um, you know, something you've been striving for, or, um, you know, all of us go through that at some point in our life. And um, sometimes it's totally unexpected, right? And sometimes that's actually the hardest when it's like, uh, you know, just bam, you're blindsided. Um, and again, it's easy to kind of punish ourselves for like, what we didn't do, oh, I didn't help that person enough, or I didn't tell them I loved them enough, or, or, geez, you know, I didn't know this was a problem, so I couldn't fix it, and I should have, I should have, would have, could have, like, all of these, and that just adds so much to the pain that's already present, and so there are a couple of things that you can do with all of these, I mean, one of the things I found super useful in just getting it all out is um, writing it down. Okay. Writing it down, oh, I should have helped this person more, or I should have seen all the signs. But, you know, all those shoulds. Just when you're shooting on yourself, it's a judgment. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the barrage of judgments may be happening, and, and whatever you could do, just write it all out, get it on paper, uh, um, and, and burn it up. Or um, the other thing I often recommend to people is like, write down the gift you actually were to that person, right? When you're being berating yourself for not being good enough, right? Just like, oh, well, you know, all the, write down some of the good things too to reorient. Okay, well, I, you know, like for one of my friends, well, I didn't do energy work on him enough. Oh, but I did it for him, uh, you know, when I could, and he really enjoyed that, and, and we had a good time with it, and, you know, oh, I remember that picnic we went on, and I was that gift there. So that you give yourself a little of that, that compassion that Elizabeth Gilbert was talking about, where it's like, your job wasn't to be perfect, and it never is. And and yes, as you're seeing this, okay, what information can I gather to make my life better in the future? Um, one of the things that sometimes comforted me, <laughs> I say sometimes, sometimes comforted me is that both of the Hawaiians, well, let's just go with the Hawaiians. The Hawaiians believe that everyone chooses when they're gonna go. Okay. So let's take John Lennon, for example. In his last interview that he gave, he said, I came here, I, I did what I came here to do. That's what he said. I did what I came here to do on the planet. So he kind of knew, like, okay, I'm ready to go. I've done it, what I, what I came to do. 
right? And even if it doesn't feel like, no, this person's life was too short or they, no, they weren't ready to go. Like on some level, their soul or their being or whatever it is knew that this was the time, right? You, you couldn't have prevented that because they knew that this was the time, even if logically it doesn't look like it should be. Okay. So for me, that has been a huge gift um, when I reorient myself in that direction. And even with, um, and then, you know, I was, I was working with a guru at one point and she said that miscarriages are a baby that has come in to have an experience and go through some, go through some karma and they don't actually need to incarnate on the planet. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, it looks like it's such a tragedy and it's incredibly emotionally painful. And maybe it was a gift for that being to come in and have an experience and go, right? And not actually have to go through being born. So, for what it's worth, sometimes these kind of perspectives can can help shift us from, oh gosh, you know, I could have maybe prevented their death or whatever it is into like, okay, cool, right? They're on a journey. I don't quite get it. I, I wish it were different. And yet, hey, you know, me with, with my desires, <laughs> I don't exactly know what's best for that person, All right? Um, shifting a little bit. Yes, the book that I mentioned earlier is called The Secrets of Being Happy by Richard Bandler, The te Technology of Health, Hope, and Harmony. So, um, it is quite a read. It's kind of like several workshops within 350 of 350 or so pages. All right, so let's talk a little bit about other people, right? I mentioned earlier that, like, we can't prevent having an experience like this, right? Like, everyone on the planet is, is going to have some kind of, like, disappointment or grief. And it's important to connect to the pr people who are willing to listen and be present with you in that. And oftentimes it's someone who may have gone through it themselves, right? And sometimes it's a support group, right? Now it's important if it's a support group, well, I'm gonna give an example of someone I know. She has a divorce support group and she goes to it however after she's there, she actually comes back and she's in a worse place, in a worse mood than the rest of the week. Okay, so I suggest <laughs> if it's a support group, it's really something that's generative and creates more for you than going to rehash and re-go through the pain that um, has been caused, okay? Because if we're just reiter reiterating and reinforcing the anger, the pain, the upset, you're actually reinforcing those neural pathways. Now, a healthy level of anger, grief, whatever it is, is really important. It's when you keep rehashing that same thing and you, you amp it up, that is not so useful. So the more you can do exercises and that transform it, um, that that can be a really useful thing. Um, and and talking with people can also help you release. Talking, writing, um, do definitely doing your call a friend card, that comforting person who's who's willing to just listen or give you a, a concept, an idea, a tool shift something uh, is really useful. And if that's a support group for you, awesome, All right? Um, just, just really observe yourself and see, oh, actually, am I in a worse place, as a place for a day or two when I come back from my support group? Okay, maybe that's not actually super supportive. 
for my life. So um, definitely be in the question about that. Now, one of my favorite quotes that I heard some years ago, however, is shared joy is double joy and shared sorrow is half sorrow. So um, if you can find, just ask like, okay, who is my friend or who is that person who's going to lend an ear who actually, you know, will, will help me instead of like pulling me into more of the anger and the upset. Right. And reorient, reorienting. And, um, you know, a lot of times when we're in a challenging place, you know, we, we can go into a depressed state and stuff like that. So, uh, a couple of hints I have for that, and of course, I'm not a psychologist, so I'm, and I'm not a psychiatrist, so I'm not able to prescribe stuff. However, um, some of the things that research has found can really change, um, you know, serotonin levels and and things like that. Endorphins in the body um, are one gratitude. The researcher Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania has done numerous studies over the past 20, 30 years about the power of gratitude and learned optimism and things like that. And, and um, one of the most powerful practices he's found is to write three things you're grateful for, right? I mean, right before you go to bed. Okay, so it might be, oh, I'm really grateful. We have indoor plumbing. Imagine what it would be like to have to go outside and, you know, to an outhouse with a flashlight every night. And, you know, so, so what you do is you, you write something you're grateful for and then why. All right. So I'm really grateful of, or some addendum. So I'm really grateful for the amazing lunch I had because I didn't have to make it and it was delicious or whatever it is. Okay. Number two, so that's the first one, gratitude. Number two, um, exercise. Okay, if you can find some way of, of adding exercise when you're in a super negative space, I myself have, have found this to be so useful. Like deep, deep heartbreak, sadness. I started exercising more, okay? Um, it, it, like work workout, get yourself sweating, getting those endorphins going really changes what's going on in the body. Okay. Um, number three, writing, writing what you're sad about, writing what you're grateful for, writing um, has, has also been found to be such a useful tool in overcoming challenges. And then also connecting with people, whether that's going to Hold, like doing something that's a contribution, if you can, like going to hold babies, newborns at a hospital or going to, uh, you know, this is not people, but volunteering at the Humane Society or at a soup kitchen or something where you are being a contribution, where you are like, okay, yes, your pain is something, but you're doing something to alleviate the pain or the suffering of someone else something else, being a contribution. So um, gratitude, exercise, writing, being a contribution, and, and connecting with people in a fun way. Um, the final thing is like adding something to your life that's engaging and exciting for you, that kind of pulls you in the direction of newness, of creativity, of joy. Uh, I have a friend who is, who is talking about, oh, she, she bought herself uh, an art kit recently. You know, something where it's like you're exploring either a skill that you have that you're tapping back into or a new skill that gets your creative juices flowing so that you're, you spend less time thinking about the problem and more energy in directions of creating your life. So 
Oh, we've explored a lot today from the, uh, these tools we just talked about to the exercises from neuro-linguistic programming to expanding out um, and to finding a friend to lend an ear and, you know, start to explore just which of those kind of pops for you, which of those seems to resonate and then go in that direction and, and keep adding the different tools, the ones that seem to, to resonate and, and um, you certainly don't have to do all of these things <laughs> over the past hour unless you know, you're like an explorer and you want to see what each of those, those does and changes. Um, and you know, whatever your situation is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're growing right now and and you will get through it. So um, you know, reach out and and I'm happy to listen too. So <laughs> uh, you can message me at meetkathywilliams.com uh, no matter what it is. I love to hear from you and I'll be on next week. We're talking about vision next week with Sophie Mihalko. And last week's show was an amazing show with Andrea Lucas, the author of Own It All. And you can find all that on SoundCloud, iTunes, or at iom.fm. Thanks, everybody.